Today is January 6th, isn't it? Okay. This is Joe Todd interview with John Duncan. Mr. Duncan, when were you born? 1890. Oh, wait a minute. Born in 1880. 1880? Or 1980. Yeah. And where were you born? Lebanon, Missouri. That's the part of the state. Who was your father? John W. Duncan. Was he from Missouri, your father? Where was he from? Ohio. Ohio. And who was your mother? She was out of the Indian Territory. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Julia Duncan. Judy Duncan? Julia. Julia. What was her name before she got married? Teague. Teague. T-E-A. T-E-A. T -E -A. T -E -A. T -E -A. How long did you live in Missouri? About 18 years. No. Things were pretty well done enough at that time. See, we didn't have no Central Bureau. They never got to me. Well, it's just like Civil War fighting over again. And people fighting and making the folk raising the money, you see, to get them hold the Central Bureau. Well, they, uh, I was born in 1980, and in 1892, they picked me up as a boy of 12. That was 1892. And first, I get jumbled up. Anyhow, they took the census in 92. They got me as a boy 12 years old. And then the next eight years, when they took up the census, I took it. I applied for the job. And I took the first census that I took in Missouri. In Lebanon? Yeah. What was the population of Lebanon then? Oh, about 200. Did you go to school there? Went to school, rural school. What was the name of it? Merchant. Merchant? School south, eight miles north of Lebanon, still stands. I come to this country. I had a team of Missouri News, 30 days on the road. When did you come to this country? Well, it was long in, it's just after 1900. And where did you settle? Colorado. What part? Lamar. Lamar? How big was Lamar when you first got there? Oh, it wasn't very big. I parked with teams. Champs on the ground here around the courthouse there. That's all there was that there. I come just kind of go to life, me and her. Incidentally, they lived together 68 years. 68 years? Yeah. Were you a farmer? Run cattle and sheep. Cattle and sheep. 
Did you file on land in Colorado? How long did you live in Lamar? I never did live in Lamar. I lived south of town. About how far? 18 miles. How much land did you have? Oh, it varied. Buy and sell one and buy another. I think I got, well, I ain't got any. I did it all to the kids. But How many head of cattle did you run? Oh, 1,500. What kind? White face. White face? How many head of sheep did you have? 2,000. What time of year did you shear the sheep? Spring. Spring? Yeah. Shared my own sheep a lot of time. When they had that war, or oh, Custer's they were? last thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, were they Sioux Indians? Sioux, uh huh. Hmm. His dad was a soldier in the Confederate Army. Hmm. Confederate Army and spent some time at Anderson. Uh, hmm. So his father was in the Union Army? Confederate Army. Okay. I tried to do some family history and I found that out. Yeah. I thought it was Union. Yeah. Um, sister and she and her husband froze to death up in Indian territory in the Dakotas. <coughs> you look pretty nice. Even if you got a cut of your hair. How long did you live in on your land up at Lamar? Oh, I couldn't tell you. Mm -hmm. You say you shared. Oh, I lived up there about forty years. See, young ladies who had moved their cattle when it rained, and you run around a whole lot. What kind of work did your father do? Ranched. He was a rancher? Yeah. In farmer, Missouri? Farmer and rancher. And Mason, don't forget. Was your father in the military? Yeah. Where, where did he serve? Uh, I don't know what you call it. He bought horses for the army. The Union Army? What? The Union Army? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, Confederate Dad. What? He served in the Confederate Army. Well, he served in both of them. Well, yeah, he was in the war of the states. They captured him and he went with them. He was captured by the Union Army? The Union Army. Mm -hmm. He was an aide to the general. He, I guess that's how he met Grandma. He rode out west and bought horses for the Confederate Army. How far west did he go? You know? Well, he must have gone to the Dakotas because he found Grandma up there someplace. 
Where did he find Grandma? Up in the Dakotas? No, he got out of the territory. Well, yeah. There and, weren't states out here. Yeah. yeah. And you say her people were killed with a little bighorn? Yes. Hmm. And were their names? T. T E A. You remember you told me Grandma's name was. T. Yeah, I remember that since you spoke about it now. When did you come down to this country? Oh, about 25 years ago. We dried out up there in Colorado and I brought my cattle all down here. Rented pastures up west here. We had a granddaughter, four or five years old. We raised her and we raised one grandson. And we moved in here to school them. And I bought a mall place. Did you go to school? Oh, you went to a rural school in Missouri. And what was the name of it? Merchant. How far did you go in school? Oh, well, we only had to go a mile. What grade did you go to? There wasn't no grade them days. There wasn't? Who was your teacher? Oh, Jesus, a lot of different ones. I couldn't go back that far. What was your favorite subject? Oh, I liked arithmetic. Good. What kind of games did you play in school? Baseball. And then you were the census taker in 1900? Yeah. Right. How'd you come out to Colorado? Deep and wagon. 30 days on the road. Wife and two little kids. Can you tell me about the trip? Anything happened on the trip? No. How about crossing rivers? Well, you either wait, wait until they went down or saw them. Just what they Dad, you might tell him that you had TV and Mama drove the wagon. You were flat on your back in the wagon bed. Yeah. And tell about the time you stopped at the farmhouse to buy some hay. And the man came down. You thought he was going to fight you? Yeah. Can you tell him that? Well, we fenced this in in his house. There's quite a little yard out there in the garage at the time. I pulled down there and camped. And this got camped by i to come out of the house and come walking up there. I made sure he's going to make my move, you know. So he come up. I spoke to him. I was at the front end of the wagon. He was out there grazing. I reached down and got the wrench that you take the wheels off with. The old fellow, he come up. Walked over, sat down on the wagon tongue with me. I looked like he put me a break of wagon tongue off. He said, God, young fellow, I wish I'd have gone with you. He said, I was out there once in Colorado. So he visited a while, and I just said, You load that gal and them kids up, and take them down, take them to the back of the house, and you go in and we were cooking eat in there. He never considered me at all in any way, shape, or form. He would let, we stayed a week with him. Finest old fellow he ever saw. 
I went back 20 years later over the road, stopped and seen him, but he had moved into town. Where was that? This side of Wichita. No, don't even know my whole name but half the time. What kind of house did he live in? What? What kind of house did he live in? Oh, a frame this, house? This one had a good big house. Mm -hmm. What kind of house did you build on your land in Colorado? On your homestead. I bought a fellow out, my house is already there. Okay. Three rooms. Frame house? Yeah, frame house. And we built a rock house. We built a rock house. See, that is where you was born, wasn't it? Yeah, I was born on your homestead, and you built a rock house there. It started out as a dugout, remember? And then you built a rock house. Yeah. When did you meet your wife? Oh, I don't know. We grew up together. Mm -hmm. When did you get married? I think about 1910 or 11. What was your wife's name? Goldie. What was her name before she married you? Cochran. Cochran. Can you tell me what your average day was like on your land? What kind of chores you had to do on the ranch? Well, we had to kind of keep the cattle herded in our line. Keep them a deer all in a bunch as we could. I generally had about two boys. I drove cattle from Cimarron here to the Arkansas River at Lamar for beef. I furnished one butcher shop up there, three beers a week. Hey. I spent a good bit of my time <clears throat> another Indian up there, and he was coming all the fields. He left two boys. And I got mixed up in the oil game. How'd you get mixed up in oil? Well, I got a living out of it. Did you find oil on your land? Lots of it. Do you remember the man's name that you bought out? In Colorado? J.J. Wilson. How deep was your well on your place? Well, there's five, five of them that run from 50 to 500. 5,200 to 5,700. Now these oil wells? Yeah. Oil wells? Yeah. 
How many barrels a day were they pumping? Well, they don't pump it for the day. They have Are you thinking about cubic feet? Huh? Are you thinking about cubic feet of gas? Isn't that the way to measure Yeah. We only get to sell three million a day. What was the price of gas then? What? What was the price of gas at that time? Well, the price rise too, like everything else. You know, the back east, and before a certain date, I only get one check in this outfit. And they don't allow them to. The oil field is in four squares. And if you don't, one square is all in cell. And it's like on the ground there. The other three, they put a latch on them and they mark closed. Well, if you get, they get mad at, well, it gets mad at them or something like that, well, they'll just put him on the waiting list and go over and get the oil off of the other one. They've got four chances to get oil without disturbing the whole field. But my well is, now this, this oil, and me and mom got our first oil check about 10 years ago. Why, they just about pump enough to keep you going. I think uh, it's probably near 15 or 20 years ago, isn't it, Dad? It's quite a while. Yeah. But when the, my lawyer said to try treating them right and not cuss them and they might get along better and by God it sure paid out. Mm -hmm. Now when I got sick last fall with the diabetes, I got hospital just three or four day, days after in the hospital, they sent me a check for $3,000. Mm -hmm. Well, I $3,000. When you were selling beef on your land, what was the price of beef? About well, three or four cents a pound. This was around, what, 1900? Yeah, long ago. Where'd you sell your beef? Butcher. There in Lamar? Yeah. I furnished two or three outfits of beef. They just come and get it with a quarter. And how many head of cattle did you have? Oh, seven or eight hundred. Were, were they your major source? Yeah. How deep was your water well? Well, I had wells of any description. How about the one at the house? Well, it's one here. The one at home up at Barrel Springs wasn't yeah. over 20 foot deep, was it, Dad? No. We were, yeah. we lived on a creek and we always had deep water. We never had any problems water. So you lived at Barrel Springs? And that's south of Lamar. Yeah, Little East. How come you moved to Colorado from Missouri? Remember, you were sick. You had to come west. Oh, well, my wife hauled me here on a covered wagon. Because you had TB?
When did you first get TB? Oh, I was the railroad like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I was in a couple of wrecks. When did you work for the railroad? Oh, about 1905. That was in Missouri? Yeah. Which railroad you work for? St. Louis and San Luis. What'd you do for them? Fired. Now, what, what's that? Throw coal in and make a hot fire and steam to run on. Is that how you got TB? What? Is that what caused your TB? Well, I figured it was. There wasn't no such thing as an x-ray in them days, you know. When did you start working for the railroad? God, I couldn't tell you. See, I worked for St. Louis in 1904. I had a World's Fair. You worked at the World's Fair? Yeah. What'd you do? I had a little wagon that hauled people from around. A kind of a cop, too. What was your impression of the World's Fair? What? What did the World's Fair look like? Can you just give me a quick overview, how big it was? Oh, it's pretty good sized. What was your favorite exhibit? I didn't have to do that. I kept the peace. You kept... different nationalities and all that was. You kept the peace? Yeah. How'd you do that? Cop. Oh, you were a policeman? Yeah, I was. How long did the World's Fair last? I think about two years. What was your favorite part of the fair? The money I of it. How much did you make? Oh, I made... I expect 80 or 90 cents a day. Labor wasn't too high. What was your favorite building at the fair? Oh, I was interested in livestock. Who was head of the fair? God, I wouldn't know. I know it's, I put in the biggest part of the year, 1904, there. It ended that year. Who'd you work for at the fair? The fair outfit. They was organized, like... Do you know how many exhibits they had at the fair? I didn't have the least idea. They had a thousand of them, though, from all over the world. How come they had the World's Fair in St. Louis? I don't know. They've had one or two cents in different places. Have he told you any stories about the fair? No. He's told me about that. While he was growing up, his father was a mason, just along with farming, and uh, they did some bricklaying. I don't know if you're familiar with the castle at, at the Lake of the Ozarks, isn't it, Dad? What? That Ha Ha Tonky Castle back in Missouri that you helped your father, you and your dad laid the brick or the stone. When you and your dad laid brick for buildings, yeah. remember the bank back in Lebanon, they say still has your name on it. It's a grocery store now. 
Yeah. When your dad and you would work, he would put the year that you laid it up and your man. Well, me and Hansel Farmer built the bank. Yeah. And that was long in 1904. Well, that was before that. Yeah, before that. That was before 1900. Then, Before 1900, and this fella come through here a year or so ago, an old man, and he told me, he said that plastering right by the door in that bank building back there in Missouri fell off. He said, I want you to go back and put it on. <laughs> That's all 90 to 100 years. Mm -hmm. How long did you live in St. Louis? Oh, I never did live there. Where did you live when you worked at the fair? Oh, I boarded. Where at? Hotel. Old Town. Hotel. Oh, hotel. Yeah. Which hotel did you live in? I couldn't tell you that either. You say there were four butcher shops in Lamar? Yeah. How often would they buy beef? Just when they was out. They'd take a quarter or two quarters, whatever they thought they could handle. What's a quarter? Two quarters? Huh? You mean like a hind quarter? Yeah. Okay. Did you butcher the beef yeah. for them? So they just bought a hind quarter or a side of beef off you then? Yeah. Where'd you butcher your beef? Just right out in the barnyard. How many would you butcher at a time? Whatever we needed. Would you butcher the beef whenever they came down from Lamar? I let my beef come in south of Lamar. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the Spanish-American War? Yeah. Did you do any work for the war effort? I couldn't tell you, but what was that question you asked a while ago? Spanish-American. Yeah, Spanish-American War. Was we implicated in that or not? Did you do any work for the war effort? in that war. That's about too far back from me, I can't. Yeah. Dad, was, excuse me, but Dad wasn't involved in any. This PB yeah. kept him out of anything like that. He, he couldn't pass. Okay. Of course, most ranchers were exempt anyway. Yeah. And they were raising but, beef with the soldiers. Uh, yeah. But he did raise beef. Yeah. But he couldn't be a soldier. He yeah. counted as PB. Mm -hmm. And soon after he got to Colorado, he went to, you went to collect some rent that time that fellow stabbed you in the lungs with a knife, didn't you? Yeah, I've been stabbed all over. Tell me about that. What happened? Oh, there's two or three of them jumped on to me. 
One of them jumped up on my shoulders, kind of behind, and the other one started to hit him with the bed rail. And I seen I was into it. I just reached up and caught the bed rail and jerked it out of his hand, hit him over the head with it, and damn near killed him. That ended the fight. Before he'd pretty well cut up one side of your chest. Yeah. Where was this? I was around Lebanon, Missouri. How come they jumped on you? I think you said you were out collecting rent. What? I believe you told us that you had gone over to collect the rent. They yeah. Were on a rented place. I rented one up for you. Well, you know, How long did you ranch up in Colorado? How many years? A uh, good many. She was born there. How old are you, Ruby? Are you the youngest, oldest? Little? No, I'm along in the middle. I have one sister and a brother younger than I am. When she was just a little old, but she could walk around. She could eat. She um, wanted it. I guess she's two or maybe three years old. She drink milk. And we planned them days when we took the family to town once a year, bought groceries. We was gonna to start to town. Mom come running out and said, we can't go to town. Said that kid in there thought of something in her stomach working out. So I went in and had a red spot, just a little spot. She was down playing in the floor about that much of a needle sticking out. So she was kind of, mom was kind of excited about it. And so in the meantime, she got up and went out inside the house for him. Mom come out and showed me the needle and I just reached over and pulled it out. She played a little while, didn't fall over dead, and we went all to town. <laughs> she swallowed that needle. We had lots of experiences like that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me some stories about your childhood? I had to put her up.
So your father served on both sides of the war? Yeah. Dad, I think it was just Junior. He was in prison. Do you remember him? The Union Army, or it was just Confederate. The Union Army had him prison, prisoner for a long time. Yeah, he was Andersonville. Yeah, but he was always a Confederate. All those records I got about your dad. He was always a Confederate. He joined the war in 64, I believe, and then they fought for a while and quit, remember? Yeah. And then he What? That's really about the horse. Yeah. The Confederate Army. I have the name of the Captain Virginia who served under those Confederate Army. Um. Did your father meet your mother in the Dakota Territory? Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he was a scout for the army, and uh, they, he bought horses. We, ha I have the record of how many horses he sell at a time and how much money he got. I. Well, he gave about ninety dollars a piece for him. Well, that was later, Dad. I think yeah. in that war it wasn't that much. Did uh, your mother ever talk about her family at Little, little Bighorn? Or? No, my grandmother. Your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Did she ever talk about no, that? No, she or? was dead before I was yeah. born. All Dad has ever told me is that they were all killed at the Little Big Horn, Custer's Last Stand. I guess there was a lot more Indians killed there than we're told because they killed a lot of them. How come you moved into this country? Dried out up there. What, the water dried up? <laughs> yeah. The uh, grass dried up. The dirt storm. <clears throat> I moved a pretty good time. Heard the cattle down here. Leased a ranch up west. Mm -hmm. Were you up in Colorado in the 30s? Yeah. What all, were the all of them. What were the dust storms like up there? Well, you couldn't see me sitting here. Just totally black as night. How long do those storms last? Well, sometimes it lasts two or three days. How long did the drought last during that period? Oh, it was five or ten years. In fact, this. Things all change around now. Right? This ground is getting plum hot. Mm -hmm. How'd you keep the dust out of your house? Didn't keep it out. Did you try? Took a scoop shovel and a wash, uh, wash tub and sat there on the porch, scooped the dust into the tub where you couldn't carry it, and then you carried and dump it. Be streaked from a keyhole out in the middle of the floor that deep. You lose many head of cattle in the dust. Not time? too many. What about sheep? Well, I was kind of getting out of the sheep business. Did you sell sheep to the butchers in Lamar also? What? Did you sell sheep to the butchers in Lamar? No. They went to the, uh, what sheep I sold. Went to the beet farmers for feed the beet, for feed the sheep. So you raised sheep mainly for the wool? Yeah. Where'd you sell the wool? Oh, different hide outfits. What was the price of wool? Well, anywhere from 10 cents a pound to 50. Oh, my, the sheep barn still stands up there. In the 30s, what did the price of beef go down to? 
I'll say four dollars a head. You have to destroy part of your herd? Yeah. How many did you destroy? I didn't understand it. Dad, I don't think you destroyed any. I think it, the farmers around destroyed theirs. They got paid, remember? Yeah. But I don't think you let them kill any of yours. No, they never killed none of mine. We were a little more fortunate than some of the farmers. Dad managed to be able to feed his. You know, they say the worst part of the Depression, the Dust Bowl, was up in Colorado. I believe. South East of Colorado. Is it still dry out up? Did it still dry up there? Well, it's dry all over now. Is it starting to dry up around here? Yeah. How deep is your well here? I don't see how deep the well. That last well you drilled down at Betty and Claude's. Oh, that's 90 feet. 90. Yeah, that's the last well I drilled. Mm -hmm. How big was Kenton when you moved here? It's just about like it is now. Mm -hmm. How long have you lived here? 25 years. You, you lived in Kenton 25 years? Yeah. How'd you get started in the cattle business? Oh, my dad bought a few. That was back in Missouri. How many head did you bring with you? Well, we sold out back there and bought out here. What was the price of cattle here when you first came out? Oh, some of them. They just turned their giveaway. The army or the people who lived here signed up. This state or killed a lot of them. It said them. It's pretty cheap. I never let them kill none of mine. Do you remember the Depression of 1907-1908? How did that affect you, that Depression? I didn't really get that. Just there was a depression in 1907, just like in the 30s. Yeah. Do you remember that depression? Yeah. How bad was that one? Well, it was pretty bad. That's about all I can say. Did you did you lose any cattle during that depression? Yeah. No. My brother-in-law, Bud Henry Davis. Glad to know he's here. Just sit down, buddy. All right. I got to go. Longer than I have. Oh, let me think. Well, we talked about the World's Fair. Do you have any good stories about the World's Fair? No. Anything happened there? Any incidents between the different nations? Well, I had a lot of trouble with the niggers. Many of them up there at the fair? Yeah. What kind of trouble did you have with them? They were the only Nationality. Trouble enough with them to hug it up and them. I straightened it out. Go back.
Springfield on the Goddess of Liberty sits out in the square like a windmill tower. Hung eight of them to that. Then I come west. <laughs> that was in Springfield? Was the KKK pretty strong in Missouri? Yeah. Yeah, you had to kind of watch yourself. You have any stories about your childhood? No. It took you 30 days to get out to Colorado from Missouri. You had any trouble fording the rivers? How come you decided on Lamar? How come you settled there? Oh, I just camped in there. Come business. He told me about this homestead land I kept here. So he just, he offered to bring me out and show me the land then. I found on it. I took this. And he later moved to Lamar. His daughter so implicated somewhere or another now and left. So you filed a claim and then you bought Mr. Wilson out? Yeah. How much land did you buy from Mr. Wilson? About 3,000 acres. What was the price of the land? Two and a half. I still got the land. You do? How many oil wells do you have on it now? I couldn't tell you. As far as Lamar tends to them, sometimes I'll get a check or he tends to it. His boy does, he, he's dead now. Ted took care of my business over 50 years. What? I'm just trying to think what else they could talk about. That may be getting a little tired. Yeah, I was just thinking that we have a pretty good interview so far. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to load that one down.